Hello techies. Welcome to our brand new video series focused on helping you get the most of your experiences in life. Before we start the video, let's know about Uptalk. Uptalk is a live, interactive platform for software training, furnishing robust personalities who could take on universal business platforms. This is our supervisory organization, which is XYZ Motors. Now, how do we include or how do we associate a company cost, center, region, etc. with a supervisory organization? So we go to the related actions and we edit the supervisory organization. We will edit the supervisory organization. Okay. And then we will go to organization assignments. Organization assignments, and there we have two options. One is allowed organizations, one is default organizations. So in the company, right in the company, in the allowed organizations. I'm searching for XYZ group of companies. Okay, this is my allowed organization. So I'm saying that for this supervisory organization that is XYZ Motors. The allowed organization is XYZ group of companies. I will not be able to assign my workers to a different company. Right. I am not going to be as able to associate them with ABC company. It has to be part of the XYZ group of companies. Now you see how, why I need a company hierarchy. This is a company hierarchy. Why did I use a company hierarchy? Because if tomorrow, I create a new company, and I include it as part of the group of companies. Right? Then I don't need to change any other configuration. Right? because I am allowing all companies under XYZ group of companies to be eligible or to be allowed for this particular supervisory organization. If I do it on the basis of each and every individual organization, then I have to keep changing a lot of configuration. That adds a lot to the overhead. Okay, so when we are grouping things together into, into hierarchical objects, that makes maintenance a lot easier, apart from consolidated reporting, etc., etc. It also makes maintenance a whole lot easier. So now I am putting an XYZ group of companies as my allowed organizations. Now what is my default? What is by default organization that you are going to use? So we will use XYZ Motors Inc. Right, because this is included as part of this group of companies. All right, now cost center. We have created only one cost center, so let's use that. WWXYZ fails. This is allowed, so I will not be able to assign workers to any other cost center, because I am saying it's only XYZ sales. Now, if I do not want to restrict it, I can still provide a default organization. Okay, I can understand the difference between allowed and default. Good. Still confusing. So what? How does it like what happens when you put this default as allowed and allowed as default? You are not allowed. You are not allowed to stay back. You are not allowed to stay outside the house after 11 p.m. Okay, that's the rule. Let's say you are not allowed to stay outside the house after 11 p.m. By default, you should come back by 70. Got it. Okay. So can it be that you come after 7 p.m.? 
Yes, right. Yes, you can. You may. It's allowed. You may come back after 7 p.m. You may come at 8, 8 and 8, 39, so on. But can you come back after 11 p.m.? No, because I sound a lot aloud, not aloud right. So when you are saying that we are, this is, the allowed organizations, then we have to select from those set of values only. That is rule. You cannot go outside that. You cannot select an A, B, C company because it is not allowed. That default organization is the most commonly used organization. Got it. Right. So it's the most commonly if you have specified, if you have specified an allowed organization. Then the default organization has to be part of the allowed organization's right. Otherwise, there is an inconsistency like, okay, you're allowed. Time is like 11 p.m. But the default organization is midnight. A default time to come home is midnight. Is it consistent? No, you're allowed. Why are we doing a lot? Can we skip a lot? Yes, we can. Yes, we may like. Till now, we haven't even done it. Yeah, we can. We can take it off, no problem. You are giving an allowed organization because you are making the system foolproof. You're making system foolproof because eventually this is going to be used by people who have very limited idea of the work, the implementation right. Let's say you have hired somebody as a new person. They are doing the recruitment. They are doing the hiring right. So they may not be able to understand what is what, and they will end up choosing a different company, maybe by just a typo. Right. We don't want that. We only want them to see what they are authorized, what they are allowed right. That's why we will try to make it as foolproof as possible. They will say okay. These are the only the organizations that you are allowed, so that, even by mistake, they don't choose something else. Right, because we are. We are configuring Workday in a way that the users will eventually use the recruiters age our managers. Managers who do not have Workday training, who do not have worked their knowledge. They are going to be the users of this system. Right, so we have to make it as foolproof as possible. Okay, so you may want to restrict the allowed organization that, okay, these are the companies that you can use. Okay, and by default you are going to use this option. X, Y, Z motor. So if you do not choose anything, this will automatically be pre-filled for you. Right, you may use it, you may choose something else. Now here are we restricting people to choose anything. Now that we have left allowed organizations as blank, are we restricting people to something? No, no, there is no restrictions by default. It is XYZ Motors Inc. as the company, XYZ Sales as the cost center, but can they choose a GMS North America as the company? That's allowed, but that won't be the default. Yeah, that would be four, but it is still allowed. So the user may choose a GMS company. They may choose, let's say, executive management, from the GMS cost center hierarchy. Yes, they may still choose it because we are not restricting anything. So if you want to restrict the user, then you have to put in something in the allowed organizations. Clear. Yes. Thank you. Okay. 
So now let's click on OK to save this. So now we have associated some company cost center, etc., with the supervisory organization. You see, there are other options as well. You can also include a region division program as part, along with a supervisory organization as well. That is how we correlate them. Yes, Chris. Can you please walk through with the navigation once again for to associate with the supervisory organization? Of course. So you go to the related actions. And then you go to supervisory organization and you edit the supervisory organization. Please do like, share, and subscribe to our channel. For more information, contact us at sales at the rateuptalk.com.